back. This is Mr. Hassan's Mass Channel. I'm now answering question number six from the October 2023 Pure Mathematics P2 paper from International A-Level NXL. And this question here is a question about, I guess, the trapezium rule, the way it looks. It says a river is being studied. At one particular place, the river is 15 meters wide. I guess that's what that shows there. The depth y meters of the river is measured at a point x meters from one side of the river. Figure 1 shows a plot of the cross-section of the river and the coordinate values x, y. So these are different points along the river. Okay, I guess these are the widths 3 and these are the depths. The y coordinates are the depths of the points on the river. Okay. Um, it says, use the trapezium rule with all the y values given in figure 1 to estimate the cross-sectional area of the river. Okay, so basically, what we have to do is we have to split this into a number of trapeziums which they have given us here. We can see there's one, two, three, four, five trapeziums. So this 15 units across is split up into five equal strips. Okay, each strip being, if they're equal, it has to be three, three units long. Three, as we can see from here, six, nine, twelve. So from these strips, we're going to basically form some trapezium shapes. Okay, the first one actually will be like a triangle shape. Okay, but we can treat it like a trapezium as you'll see. And then you'll have these you know, trapeziums, which will give us an estimate of the area. Okay, it won't be the exact area as you can see. The area under these trapeziums are going to be less than the area of the actual riverbed because the trapeziums and these triangles in the beginning and the end, they are actually, um, you know, of less area altogether than the area of the, of the bed because they fit inside the, the inside the, the curve fits, you know, is basically, um, they, they fit inside the curve, you could say, right? So there's going to be some um, underestimate here, which I think is one of the parts of the question later on. So to use the trapezium rule, we simply just have to just make a little table of values of x against y all right and we have x as 0 0 okay and we have as 3 1.52 and we've got 6 and 2.74 and we have 9 and 3.12 and we have 12 and 3.08 have 15 and 0. So basically what we've got is we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 strips. Okay, there's 5 trapeziums. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So we're going to have the, the, the formula for the area of a trapezium is going to be of, of using the trapezium rule is n over 2 times, okay, so that's um, well basically h over 2, h being the distance between the parallel sides. That is basically h, okay times and then you're going to have the height of the first strip which is zero okay plus the height of the last strip which is also zero plus two times the heights of the strips in between okay so for the first strip it's zero the height the last strip the, the light the, the height of the last part here is zero but in between you've got all these others so you're going to have in, in this case you know it's it's going to be basically um you call that y1 and yn, and then it's all the y's between. Okay, so in this case, what we can do is you can say, okay, our area is going to be the dis distance between the parallel sides, which is 3, divided by 2, that's h over 2 times. You're going to have 0 plus 0, the y values of the first and the last, which is going to be 0, and you're going to have 2 times everything in between. So you're going to have 2 times 1.52 plus 2.74, plus 3.12 plus 3.08. Okay, and that's going to give you your answer. So the three and the twos will cancel out. So we end up with three times all of these added together, which I can just stick in the calculator in one go. So I'm going to end up with uh, three times. In brackets, I have 1.52. 1.52 plus 2.74 plus 
3.12 plus 3.08. Okay, just make sure. And that gives us 31.38. 31.38, and we can say square units. Okay, so there's the answer uh, to part A. Okay, so um, that's basically based on the trapezium rule. The formula for the trapezium rule will be in your formula sheets. But basically, it's like you're finding the area of each of these trapeziums. Now, the first height and the last height is normally used only once. And in this case, it happens to be zero. So it ends up being a triangle, actually. Right, so we basically, um, you know, ended up finding the area of each of these trapeziums and adding them together by using this formula. Okay, so if you want to see more detailed explanation of this formula, you can go to one of my previous videos on the trapezium rule where I've gone into more detail um, on how the trapezium rule actually works and what, what the derivation of the formula is. I've kind of touched upon it a little bit here, but not gone into that much detail. So that's 31.38 square units, and it says estimate um, is the cross-section of the river. Okay, so that's fine. We can leave it like this because it's an exact value. We don't have to write around it to 3SF. If we did, it would be fine as well, but uh, that, that comes out as this exact value, so we can leave it like that for now. Okay, so that, that's part A. Then it says the water in the river, so we said the area was 31.38. So the water in the river is modeled as flowing at a constant speed of 1.5 meters per second across the whole, whole of the cross-section. Use a model and the answer to part A to estimate the volume of water flowing through the section of the river each minute. So we have this kind of shape. I'll take this, uh, take this across. Okay, so we have this kind of shape. We know the cross-sectional area of this shape is 31.38, um, 31.38, and it was meters squared. Okay, is that meters? Yeah, okay. So that's the cross-sectional area. Now, we can they've told us that it's flowing at 1.5 meters per second across the whole cross-section. So you can say that there's water flowing every second, 1.5 meters length of water is flowing every second. So we can say the volume, the volume per second flowing in this it's going to be the cross-sectional area times how deep it is. Because that's the area of a prism. It's like a prism. So the cross-sectional area is going to be 31.38 times 1.5. That's going to be the volume flowing every second. So we take this answer multiply by 1.5. That gives us 47.07, 47.07 meters cubed per second okay and we got to find the water flowing each minute so we can say that we want to find in we know that we want to find how many centimeters cubed flow in one minute and we know that 47.07 centimeters cubed flow in one second so now one minute is like 60 seconds so if I rearrange this, I'll have x equals 60 times 47.07. So that will tell us how much flows per minute. Okay, so 47.07 flows per second multiplied by 60. That gives us 2,824.2. 2,824.2 meters cubed per minute. Okay, so there's the answer. Okay, to two significant figures, we'll say x equals 2, 8, and then two zeros, 2,800 meters cubed per minute. That's the volume flowing every minute through this um, channel, whatever it is, this river. Okay, so there's the answer to part B. And now for part C, it says, assuming the model... State giving a reason for your answer, whether your answer for part B is an over or an underestimate of the true volume of water flowing through the river. As we mentioned earlier, okay, if we, we use the trapezium rule, okay, so if we do make trapeziums out of this shape, 
you can see that our trapeziums will have an area less than the actual area. Because if we were to draw these lines to make the trapeziums, we can see that they are, you know, the cur they're the curve. They fit inside the curve rather than the curve fits inside them. Okay, so we can say as the uh, trapeziums, as the trapeziums fit inside the curve, therefore this will be an underestimate. Okay, if it was the other way around, if the uh, curve fit inside the trapezium, then that would be an overestimate. Okay, so this is how we can um, understand that. All right, so you can see there's extra bits of volume which are not counted when we are taking the trapezium rule. All right, so there's your answer to part uh, C of question number six. Other questions from this. Paper can be found in the playlist that we'll be pairing over in this region of the page at the end of this video. Other questions from this topic of uh, trapezium rule, I guess, can be found in the playlist over here. It's from P2. Um, you can subscribe to the channel by clicking on this link and you can watch a video which will be linked here, which tells you how to use my channel effectively. Thank you for watching and see you soon.